So I'm in Little Ireland near Algonquin in Ontario and I'm about a month home from Ireland, the little island 100 by 300 miles where I was born and educated and uh, where my peoples have lived for 11,000 years. And so, speaking about intergenerational resilience, I suppose I'd start with survival existence is resilience. You know, if you're still here, your particular peoples, your particular knowledges, your particular embodied presence and genetic gifts are still here after, and in our case, 900 years of colonization, genocide, famine, land clearances, disease, starvation, like you know, if you're still here, then you're, you're resilient and um, part of that resilience is being able to uh, not just be here, but be here present, like actually able to be present and conscious and embodied and aware. So that means not just being here and surviving, but also um, knowing the history of your peoples and your context while you're here because that's part of your presence it's part of what you carry so to know the history of your peoples and your family from your own perspective not from the perspective of the dominant culture and to know that within the context of the processes of colonization is for sure part of intergenerational resilience um, the other piece of that is to know your own family and your own generational context, the stories, and to know them in a way that you're not entangled in them by the loyalties of the time or the understandings of the time, because you are here now. And so the understandings that you bring to that survival and colonization history and the particular family history within it are from here and now. And so that also means dealing with those entanglements, those collective woundedness and the personal woundedness that comes down through those generations. So the uh, collective woundedness would be things like accommodating to the powers that be or normalizing violence because it's been in your family and peoples for generations and the same with other kinds of woundedness that are transgenerational like uh, addictions and sexual abuse and uh, relational cutoffs, those kinds of things. And then the more sort of uh, structural things like absentee landlordism and, you know, <sighs> dismissal of vulnerabilities, those sorts of things that are part of what's carried down. Anyway, so it's understanding the survival and the context from a colonization perspective and your personal family stories without the entanglement. And um, also with an understanding of seeing, recognizing, calling out and not normalizing violence, the violations of boundaries that are part of that history. So, and being able to do that in yourself as well as in others and to do so in nonviolent ways, that requires a lot of creativity. And those of us who have, I would say, intergenerational resilience usually also tend to be cultural creatives. That is, 
were creative in multiple ways, were not just like good academics or um, artists, were also writers and gardeners and um, bloggers and, you know, people like Trailblazery and the, some of the next generation in Ireland that are just opening up all, whole new ways of integrating what we know and me, putting it into media that's planet-wide. So I think that's the other bit, is not only the survival and the history and the colonisation and the recognising of the violence, but also being able to bring our gifts to it, our gifts that can actually express, be expressed right now. We need support sometimes for that, but the gifts, the, the gifts that we bring, they're, they're shaped by the generations and the gifts of those before us, but they're ours. There are particular gifts in this time and this place, and we may need support. We do need support from others in order to put that out. It's we're, we're answering a collective call and we're trying to deal with collective traumatic wounding and we're, we need to do that together. We can only do that usually with some sort of community support. And I suppose the last piece of that resilience for me, well, I think it's actually part of most intergeneral rational resilience is some connection to spirit as fundamental so and that spirit is very embodied it's you know our spiritual connection to the land the land of our peoples or the land of our adoption as settlers it's to the planet as our shared home with the much more than human world and it's to the sense that we're part of a larger life stream in a larger evolving cosmos in which we're co-creative. That's why the intergenerational resilience is important. That's why what I've learned from First Nations here in Canada, my teachers, um, has been that sense of the seven generations of seeing backwards and forwards so that we're, we're fostering intergenerational resilience in our grandchildren, in our children and our grandchildren by living and modeling and sharing practices of daily living that actually um, will sustain that resilience going forward. And in that we know we're supported by community and by the whole context of larger spirit, not bad support. <laughs>